When you have thin, fine hair, you cannot afford to damage it. This can result in your hair falling out, breaking off, or ultimately making you feel worse and worse about your hair. But you also want to have hair that looks great, and you want to feel great. So how do you style your hair without damaging it? Buckle in, because I'm about to tell you exactly that. Look, this question came from another video I posted about thin, fine hair. And I know it's something that many of you struggle with. One of my favorite parts about this question is this. But I know that blow drying your hair isn't recommended for its health. What do you think? <laughs> After almost 30 years of doing hair professionally, I absolutely have some insight on that. We're gonna get to it in a little bit. First, let's go through a step-by-step -step for how you should be styling your thin, fine hair. Step one starts in the shower. We need to answer the questions, what shampoo and conditioner are you using? How are you applying it? And how often are you using it? Now, first off, you wanna be shampooing less often versus more often. Now, exactly how often will depend on how much product you use, how long your hair is, and how much oil your scalp produces. Basically, you want to shampoo as often as you need to, but not <laughs> more often than you need to. Okay, so usually you feel you need to shampoo your hair when it feels way down or it's lacking volume. And this is typically because of either the product you're using or your natural oil production or a combination of both. Now, when it starts feeling like this, first thing I would recommend is starting with a dry shampoo. Can that get you an extra day or maybe even two? If so, do that. Now, if not, shampoo your hair. I know there is a lot of talk about how often or how often you shouldn't be washing your hair. And that's because shampooing too often, and some shampoos in general, can strip out too much of your hair's natural oils, and your hair needs these for their health. That's also because when your hair is actually wet, it's the most fragile. And the combing and drying and styling process can all be damaging. I think it's important that you know this, but if you feel terrible about yourself because your hair feels dirty and unkept, wash it and style it. You deserve to feel great all the time. Now, when you're shampooing and conditioning your hair, make sure you use the shampoo on your scalp and only condition the end. This will ensure that the scalp gets the cleaning it needs and the conditioner won't weigh your hair down at the roots since they don't really need to be conditioned. Now, also, I have a lot of people that ask about how to clean the ends if you're only shampooing your scalp. The fact is, when you shampoo just the scalp, you're still gonna end up with getting enough of that shampoo through the mid shaft and the ends that it's gonna get clean in the process. The key is that you're just concentrating the shampoo at the scalp. And I talk more about how to do this, especially if you've got short hair in another video that I'll link at the end of this video so you can learn more about that. Okay, so what shampoo and conditioner should you be using? This is probably one of the questions I get asked the most often, and there are so many out there. There's just too many to even try to go through or mention if I'm honest. So what I wanna share here is much more important. What a lot of people don't know is there is a massive sales pitch when it comes to volumizing shampoos and conditioners. To be totally honest, it's actually pretty dangerous for you. But don't worry, I got your back. I'll break it down and tell you how to avoid this ridiculous pitch. I know that you've seen volumizing shampoos and conditioners everywhere. And I also know it's really easy to get sold into the idea that it's just simple to use something as simple as a shampoo and conditioner and create volume and thickness in the shower. Now, can they add volume? Yes. But you need to know that they are not all made the same and more importantly, Importantly, you need to understand what you want to achieve. Look, we need to look at these like two separate groups. We have volumizing products, we have thickening products. Now, in many cases, volumizing products trying to make your hair feel thicker, and in some cases, look a little bit thicker. Whereas thickening products are typically attempting to actually help facilitate new hair growth or regrowth. Now, here's the big concern. Most of these products are working towards the volumizing aspect. And in many cases, they have ingredients that can actually build up on your hair to make it feel and look thicker. Now, over time, these ingredients can actually build up, which can weigh your hair down and then make it feel more greasy and oily and worst case, even lay flat. Then they can also cause inflammation and or block and irritate hair follicles. They're a bit of wolves in sheep's clothing, if I'm completely honest. I don't know if you know this, but I actually have very thin and fine hair. And every time I say that in a video, people jump into the comments like, no, it's not. There's no way it's thin and fine. Yeah, very much so it's thin and fine. But also, I have a very specific process that I use to ensure that it doesn't look thin or fine. That's why it doesn't look like that. <laughs> but here's the really cool part. I'm super excited. We're actually putting together this process into a system so that you can actually use it at home. So if you want to kind of keep up to date on that, I'm going to go ahead and throw a link in the description that you can uh, opt in and we'll keep you updated. It's going to be kind of amazing. So uh, step two, the drying process. Now there is a lot of debate regarding using heat on thin, fine hair. Does heat damage hair? Yes. Is thin, fine hair more fragile? Yes. Should you use heat to style your thin, fine hair? Also, yes. <laughs> okay, now I know, again, I'm gonna get some backlash for saying that, and some folks will disagree with me, but hear me out. If you wanna create volume or a frizz-free defined curl, and you have thin, fine hair, nine out of 10 times, you're going to need to use products and heat to achieve that. 
And the question is, how important is the end style to you? And how do we minimize the amount of damage or heat in the process? Okay, now here's how. Once your hair is towel dried and detangled, you're gonna apply a heat protector starting a couple inches away from the scalp. This is gonna give your hair the benefit of the protection without extra weight at the roots. I know you're gonna ask which one I recommend, and I obviously have my favorite heat protectant, just defrizz, which I formulated, and I'll add a link in the description where you can find it. Regardless if you use mine or another one that you love, the important thing is just that you're using one. After that, you're going to apply a product for volume. Now, this product should be applied from your roots all the way through the mid shaft into the ends to ensure that it is everywhere on your hair where your hair is gonna need it to hold the bend that actually creates the volume. After that, you're gonna tilt your head upside down and blow dry your hair to about 80% dry with the hair dryer blowing down the hair shaft towards the floor and moving it constantly, keeping the airflow from intersecting your hair directly combined with not allowing it to stay in one spot for too long is really greatly going to minimize the damage. Now, if you wanna use a brush during this process, to keep the tangles out, it's fantastic. Or you can use your hands, but just know that using a clean brush will actually minimize the potential of any dirt or oil being transferred to your hair during the process. Now, if your hair is curly, after you apply the product, you're gonna use your hands to kind of scrunch in the shape that you want, then use a diffuser on your dryer to minimize the airflow. Still, with your hair upside down, you simply move the dryer around until your hair is also about 80% dry. Now, for both parties, when the hair is 80% dry, you're gonna throw your head upright, and if your hair is curly, you're gonna continue to finish drying it to 100% with the diffuser moving it around the same as you were upside down, just right side up. Then you're gonna use your hands to break up the curl, making sure not to run your hands through the ends so you can minimize any frizz being added to the style. If your hair is straight, you're gonna finish off your style with whatever tool that you find the easiest. Now, if you're gonna use a round brush, you simply want to ensure that you're facing the airflow down the hair shaft and constantly moving that brush and dryer. You also wanna direct the section up away from the scalp, and this is gonna ensure that you don't flatten out the volume at the roots that you just created during your drying process. If you're using a flat iron, make sure that you're moving at an even pace from roots all the way to ends. This will be more efficient and it's gonna result in less passes over each section, therefore less exposure to the heat, and therefore less potential damage. If you're using a curling iron, simply just start with a lower temp and only keep it in your hair for as long as necessary to achieve the look that you want. Okay, so with all of that said, does heat matter? And more importantly, should you just avoid it at all costs? Here's my take on it. I just felt like Jerry Springer from the Jerry Springer show <laughs> at the very end. Final thoughts. <laughs> anyway, here are my thoughts. And I know that there's gonna be a lot of people that disagree with this, but I'm gonna share them anyway. So take it or leave it. You need to do what you need to do to feel good. Now, if you feel best having a polished style that looks finished, then you're likely gonna need to use some heat to achieve that, and that's okay. See, at the end of the day, there are so many things that damage your hair. Stress damages your hair, poor nutrition damages your hair, health concerns and medications damage hair. You just need to pick your poison. Not taking care of yourself mentally or physically and then constantly feeling terrible about the way you look because you don't wanna damage your hair by using heat that's like driving 150 miles an hour down the freeway, but making sure that you're wearing your seatbelt because, well, you want to be safe. Does, does that make sense? <laughs> I'm gonna hear it for that one, I feel like. Anyway, do you agree or disagree? I want to know, comment below, let me know. But regardless, now that you know how to style your hair, go ahead and watch this video right here so you can learn more important information that you need to know about fine hair. So go ahead and do that and uh, I'll see you over there.